here the camera is actually understanding how you're holding the paper and playing the car racing game. Many of you already must have thought, okay, you can browse. Yeah, of course you can browse uh, to any, any website. So you can do all sort of computing on a piece of paper wherever you need it. So, but more interestingly, I'm interested that how we can take that in a more dynamic way. When I come back to my desk, I can just pinch that information back to my desktop so that I can use my, my full-size computer. And why only computers? We can, we can just play with papers. Like paper world is interesting uh, to play with. So here I'm taking a part of a document and putting over here the second part of us from second place. And I'm actually modifying the information that I have over there. Yeah, and then I'm saying, okay, let's, this, is, this looks nice. Let me print it out, that thing. So I have a now printout of that thing. And now, so the, the workflow is more intuitive the way that we used to do before, maybe 20 years back, rather than now switching between these two worlds. So as a last thought, I think that integrating information to our everyday objects will not only help us to get rid of the digital divide, the gap between these two worlds, but will also help us in some way to stay human, to, to be more connected to our physical world. And it will actually help us not end up being machines sitting in front of another machines. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So for now, first of all, I mean, you're a genius. This is in incredible. <laughs> really. Thanks a lot. Um, what, what, are you, what are you doing with this? Is there, is there a company being planned? Or, how, or is this research forever or what? So there are lots of companies, actually sponsored companies of Media Lab, are interested in taking this ahead in a one or the way. The companies like mobile phone operators want to take this in a different way than, than the NGOs in India are thinking that why can we only have sixth sense? We should have a fifth sense for missing sense people who cannot speak. Maybe this technology can be used for them to speak out uh, in a different way, but maybe speaker system. I mean, what are your own plans? Are you, are, my, you, are you staying at MIT, or are you going to do I'm, something with I'm, this? I'm trying to make this more available to people so that anyone can develop their own Sixth Sense device, because the hardware is actually not that, uh, that, uh, that uh, hard to manufacture or something, hard to make your own. own. And we will, I will provide all the open source software for them, maybe starting next month. Yeah. So that, open source? Wow. Yes. Wow. That's, are you going to come back to India with some of this yeah, at some yeah, point? Yes, of course. What, what, I mean, what are your plans, MIT, India? How are you going to split your, your time going forward? There is a lot of energy here, lots of learning. Like all of this work that you have ever seen is all about uh, I, my learning in India. And now, even if you see, it's more about the cost effectiveness. The system costs you $300 compared to the like $20,000 of surface tables or anything like that. Or maybe even the $2 mouse just a system at that time was costing around like $5,000. So we actually, uh, I showed that to, uh, in one of the conference uh, to President Abdul Kalam at that time. And then he said, OK, we should use this in Baba Atomic Research Center for some use of that. So I'm more excited about how I can bring the technology to masses uh, rather than just staying that technology into lab or environment, something like that. Based on, based on the people we've seen at TED, I, I would say you're truly one of the two or three most best inventors in the world right now. And Thank it's you. been an honor to have you here at TED. Thank you. Thank you nice so much. Thank you. That's fantastic.